Nicola Benedetti, Nicola or Nikki? Nikki or Nicola, either is, either is fine. I'm going for Nikki. Okay. You've just asked me how I remember all those questions. Yes. <laughs> not what you should be asking an interviewer just before they start. <laughs> Definitely not, I'm sorry, I don't know why I did that. It'd be like me asking you how you remember all those notes just as you go out to perform at the proms. I know, I wouldn't appreciate that question. Definitely not. Are we ready to go? Yes. Uh, you're going to count us down? Five, four, three, two, one. You're not just about to perform, so how do you remember all those notes? Um, repetition. You play for hours every single day and you're working on um, a, you know, a, a reasonably manageable amount of, of pieces so that you just, um, you just drill. And, and also you have the structure in your head, so you know where it starts, you know the middle part, you know which keys it goes to. You know, you should, you should know that anyway. <laughs> How much have you had to sacrifice to be a star? Absolutely nothing. I have had the most unbelievable opportunities and a lot of those opportunities I, I include are, are the, the hard work, the, the, the dedication, the hours every day. That I think has made me from the age of four onwards a happier, more fulfilled and balanced person. So you picked up a violin for the first time when you were four? Yes. Did you always want to be a violinist? I didn't ever know what being a violinist was because my, my parents are not musical and none of my extended family ever had careers in music or even played any instruments. Um, my sister wanted to play, I wanted to copy my sister. It wasn't until a month or so into playing the violin I thought, I love how this feels and how this sounds. Although everyone else probably did not like how it sounded at that age. You trained at the Yehudi Menuhin School at the age of 10? For yes. about five years? Yes, I did. Did you get used to performance then from a very early age? I did get used to performing at um, Yehudi Menuhin School also a little bit before that because I studied Suzuki Method which encourages workshops, lots of kids to come together and to play for one another. But the Yehudi Menuhin School you had three concerts um, a week um, which you could put yourself forward for so that encouraged you to play a lot. What means that one brilliant musician makes it and another doesn't? I. I don't know. Um, there is a percentage of it that is um, the, the technical proficiency and, and ability that you reach by a certain age. You have to be able to execute um, all the notes pretty much accurately and perfectly. But I think beyond that stage, a large percentage is down to who you are, what message you have to say, how your sound carries to people and moves people. Um, I think that can, be, that can make all the difference. What's your message? Do you have a message? Um, I have many messages, but um, I would say primarily is the, the message of, of enriching people with the, um, with the great art form I have, I have been allowed to, to learn how to, to give to people, if that makes sense. What was your big breakthrough moment, do you think? Not sure I had one breakthrough moment. Um, I have breakthrough moments all the time in terms of my um, actual ability on the violin and my musical sense. Probably career-wise, it was the Young Musician of the Year. It was the biggest breakthrough moment because it was it was so... The BBC Young Musician of the Year. The BBC Young Musician of the Year, yes. It was uh, so massively exposed. Do you feel more exposed when you are playing as a solo artist, just on your own? than when you do with an orchestra or even in chamber music? I don't do that many performances, just me on stage and no one else. I would probably perform more than anything else with an orchestra backing me, but I have a part that is designed to be about you and about your part, and it's designed to show off what you are able to do. Um, and that can, that can feel somewhat alone, but I, I think the more chamber music you play, the more you want to involve the other musicians on stage. Do nerves as a performer help you or hinder you? Both, depending on the nerves. Some can be, um, some can be, they can make you feel physically sick. That's happened to me a couple of times, unfortunately. Feel um, or actually be? Fear. Feel or be? No, feel, feel sick. I don't think I've ever actually vomited before I've gone on stage. <laughs> but um, the rest of the time, nerves are usually a good thing. It means you still care. 
Have you ever had to stop and start again in a performance? Um, I don't... Oh, once when I was um, eight. You can... My hand fell off the violin and I literally almost dropped it and I cried for about six hours afterwards. I was so distraught at the age of eight. I mean... You can only play one piece of music ever again. What would it be? Beethoven Violin Concerto. And who is your favourite composer? Beethoven. And who is the hardest composer to play? Mm, Mozart. And that yes. is five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> really good to see you. Thank you. Managed to get through a whole five minutes with you, Nikki, without asking you whether you can speak Italian, because you're three quarters Italian, born and raised in Scotland. Yes, that's correct. Can you speak Italian? I can't. Not I'm even a little afraid. word? No, well, I yes. I mean, I, I'd studied it two or three times. The second time was the most successful and the, lasted the longest, at the end of which I actually could speak not too badly. And then, I, you know, I had to go and do some concerts and things like that, and I stopped studying. Just a few concerts? Just a few, yeah, like a year's worth, and stopped studying for that length of time. And also, I feel this immense pressure to... Like, I go to Italy and people just speak Italian to me and refuse to accept that I do not speak. It's just like, yes, you do. And so I um, um, I just end up sort of going the other way. I just don't say a word. Um, it's ridiculous. It's, it, it will happen one day. It's just it's just a, a matter of time. Can you say goodbye to me in Italian, please? Ciao. <laughs> Arrivederci.